Hello everybody and welcome back to Fully Charged. Today we have the Walking and Cycling Commissioner himself from London over to go for a little bike ride and a chat. Hey Ben, thanks for having me. It's sure. nice to be here. It's amazing seeing how much, just, you know, we know the UK has been lagging behind our European sort of friends yeah, in terms of the time, rollout yeah. of e-bikes, but my goodness, the sort of the boom in yeah. electric bikes has yeah. just been brilliant. Yeah. So, you know, you must see it as much as I do, but when I'm out and about, we're just seeing so many more people using e-bikes and time. all sorts of different things. I think what excites me about it, I don't know about you, but there are different, you know, it's appealing to different types of people yeah. who are maybe than necessarily the archetype London cyclist. And Definitely. you're, yeah. you know, I talk to people who are, you know, who maybe haven't been on a bike for years, yeah. want to try something else, they don't want to cycle all the time, yeah. or they, want, don't, they don't want to rock up sweaty or whatever yeah. else yeah. at the office, yeah. or they're bit yeah. getting older yeah. and yeah. people yeah. switching yeah. from... Yeah. But it's appealing to a completely different demographic. Exactly, exactly. And when we first opened, we were actually in the tube station in Old Street, and everyone yeah. was like, who's this madman opening a bike shop in a tube station? There's no blooming cyclist <laughs> yeah. down here. And it was like, that's the point. We were after the tube takers, the city slickers, the gas guzzlers, yeah. and, and basically, eliminating the excuses of cycling for those that probably wouldn't cycle. What we'd like you to try today yeah. is, is one of the Go Cycles. The Go Cycle is, is the best in its class. Yeah. So we'd love you to try one of them. And uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's go for a ride. Okay, okay, great. So right, we have a few um, exciting topics to, uh, to talk about yeah. today. Uh, I'm gonna get straight into it. So Paper Mile, saw it the other day, really excited by it. And uh, you know the new 2025 um, plan on top of the ULEZ. Yeah. yeah. What's the what's the, what's the deal <laughs> with that? So you know, as you know, we've we've, we've delivered the the ULEZ, then we expanded the ULEZ out to the north and cir south circular, and the and the the impact of that is really pretty impressive. So from the ULEZ, we saw probably you know the aim of it is to cut the amount of emissions and we saw the uh, air quality improve by a third so in good that, which is yeah. just astonishing yeah you know since 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 the deeks come in we've seen a 96 percent fall in air in air pollution in london so, so good. it's a massive impact but uh, you know it's uh, and we've also seen about 13 and a half thousand fewer car journeys yeah. a day so it works we know this works but one you know that was in the news today actually new data shows that we're the while levels of pollution are falling in London, they are falling slowest out in outer London, where we haven't got these charges. Yeah. Um, and so clearly there's an urgent need to do something about that, because yeah. just because some kid goes to school in outer London, yeah. what, it's not fair that they're breathing toxic air where those in, uh, in inner London or, yeah. Yeah. or central yeah. London are, is cleaning up faster. So there's a real clear need for that. Yeah. And at the same time, but as we progress with that, I think everybody's beginning to realise we need something that's simple and fair and effective. So the mayor has asked TfL to look at, well, what more can be done on this, including looking at uh, road user charging. Um, we want to bring something new in and another phase to a sort of emissions charge by 2023 yeah. uh, in London. But uh, we need to get the technology right and look at what's possible. And as yeah. I said, TfL has started looking at that. But I, you know, I think it's going to take a little bit more time before something like that's actually feasible and deliverable. Because yeah. nowhere else in the world really has anything like that yeah. at this scale. Uh, and you know, there's an awful lot of work to be done on that. Yeah, yeah. well that's great. And, and do, do you think um, that this will happen in other cities such as Manchester in, in the near future as well? Or, well, I mean... London really has been sort of pioneering and paving the way on this, both from the con original congestion charge way back in the day, um, uh, right up to the tox toxicity charge, the yeah. ULEZ and, yeah. and the stuff. And, and, and we can really see we're making progress on yeah. it. Um, you know, event, finally, some of the other cities are getting it. Yeah. So Bath's got something, Birmingham's looking at stuff, Manchester's looking at stuff. So it's great to see it. So I really do think that, um, you know, that, 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 that we, 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 we are the pioneers in this. We do, we do move things forward, but other people are constantly looking, not just in the UK, but also all around the world, asking what we're doing, how we're doing it. And so I, you know, I, I really hope that the sort of work that we're doing in London does begin to spread. And it's one of the reasons I took this job, that yeah. London's a global city. People, yeah. people, it's a trendsetter. People, it's, a trendsetter. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's an influencer. It's, yeah. it's a where innovations happen and then they spread and, and that makes this a genuinely exciting uh, exciting place to be we, we use a word sometimes when we're looking at our um, kind of like early adopter e-bike purchases yeah. and we use affluential 
<laughs> which is uh, which kind of sums up the city as well. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, yeah, I hadn't heard that term before, but uh, yeah, I think you're right. But it is, you know, the number of visits I get, calls I get asking, how do we do this? What are you doing on this thing? And so, you know, cities from all around the world are always interested in what we're up to. It's great. I mean, you can see it with the um, uh, the Santander bikes. Uh, some some of you may know them as the Boris bikes. Um, Sadiq cycles, please. Uh, Sadiq cycles. Will, Will's yeah. wheels. Will's <laughs> wheels. There we go. No, but they're brilliant, aren't they? They're, they're, Santander cycles are phenomenal. So so there was, uh, I think it was just over 10 million um, journeys last year on them. Yeah. And now uh, we're very excited to see 500 of them will be electrified. Well, I'm really excited yeah. about this. So so <clears throat> every Monday I get this email that sort of shows how many people have used the bike hire this weekend. And for the last, you know, every week, for, for, for months, it's been, oh, we've broken a record. It's been the highest number of rent uh, hires in, 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 in October. Oh my goodness, it's the highest number of, of in, in any weekend in November ever. And I get these emails every, I love the team that keeps sending me. It's a good way to start the week. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as you said, we've, we've, we've broken the record. There's been the most highs ever with the Santander cycles, but I've been pushing this for, for ages. And, one of the things I love about Santander Cycles is that we've got the evidence that shows that they actually get people cycling. Yeah, yeah. People, you know, they go out, they use it for a couple of hours and they think, actually, this isn't too bad. I can do this in London, you know, for a few quid. You don't need to sort of put a big investment, but it's actually, this is possible. This, yeah. this makes it work. But it is, now, a, it is a gateway drug it, as well. Into, exactly. Into buying this an is what I which want. we love. So, that works for normal bikes, yeah. yeah. But as you and I know, as soon as somebody gets on an e-bike, yeah, people love it. But it's you can't really describe the sensation. Yeah. It's a feeling. So what I would like, I've, you know, I, I love seeing the e-bike growth in London, and it's appealing to different people, different groups of people. Because these guys here, uh, yeah. you can see. Um, me, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, uh, the, the, the jump bikes. The jump bikes. Yeah. yeah. So the jump bikes have been like we get so many people come in and go. Oh my god! I tried to jump bike, and yeah. I just need to get but, one. Now. But I, but and so I, I, you know, jumper here. They've been doing, they've been doing a good job, and you know. But we want, I want to introduce them into the Santander cycle yeah, for official, that very yeah, reason. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, one, yeah. it gets more people cycling. Um, two, it is also, um, it, it, it is that gateway drug. It's that, it's that. It, it gives people a chance to try something with no real risk. Yeah. Yeah. They can, they, it's a trusted brand. We know yeah. how much people love and trust the Santander bikes. You know, they, they've become iconic as part so of London. They're well that sort located of, as well. They, exactly, and there's a dense network in central London of that. People can try them, build it into their journeys, yeah. and what I hope is that translates into more e-bikes in London, yeah. fewer people using their cars, yeah. less pollution, yeah. healthier population, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, and, and, and better for everybody. Definitely. I think one of the things we do need to sort of make clear, I always, I don't know if it's something sort of particularly British about this. Oh, but e-bikes, oh, they're cheating, you know? <laughs> and, or, you know, this is sort the of thing. And I, I do think that we need to sort of demonstrate that we need to make more of the fact that actually you get, you get fit doing e -bike, you know, using an e-bike. You still do 80% of the physical activity. But you would, do, you would use them more than you would a normal cycle. Not that it would just it would get people cycling that wouldn't normally cycle, but you would actually use it more than you would yes. do a normal bike anyway. And so the evidence I've seen is that people using an e-bike tend to cycle 100% further than on a, uh, on a yeah. normal bike. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 you yeah. know, that, that opens up commuting distances yeah. to a longer distance. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're carrying your family around, you yeah. know, well, frankly, when my kids were younger and they were getting a bit bigger, it was hard work lugging yeah, yeah, them yeah, around yeah. the city on the back of the bike. So, uh, and, and you also, know. as we were discussing before a bit off camera, you can buy a bigger house further away and still commute. <laughs> I, no, oh God, I, I never want to move house ever again, but I do see, you know, it's a good, it's a good thing to, is it, you know it, it, it really opens up it opens yeah. up the city it, yeah. well, and shrinks the city yeah. in terms yeah, yeah, of the yeah, time yeah, yeah, and effort yeah. needed to get and around and allows you to explore and visit more places you wouldn't normally yeah. visit so there's so many things like that um but yeah what i, what I was i was coming to a really good point there so um oh yeah 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 so um infrastructure talking about how you know there's been i mean you, you know the stats best than anyone but it's so, so yeah in, well Infrastructure is absolutely fundamental for any change in cycling in this city. Yeah. yeah? Every bit of research that's ever been done shows that the biggest barrier for, for getting more people cycling is feeling safe yes. on the road. Yeah, 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 yeah? yeah. And so, you know, the fact that there are quieter streets like this one yeah. and the cycle route that lows along it or the, the, the protected cycle route we're just about to drive on, 
absolutely key. It's yeah. the fundamental building block. Yeah. Everything else builds up on, on, from yeah. there. So we've so no, since Sadiq came to uh, came into it came to office in 2016. Since then, we tripled the amount of protected space. The so London Cycle Network, in terms of protected space, tripled in that first term. But then we went on, and during the whole, uh, you know, the COVID crisis, we delivered a lot of emergency measures. We delivered 100 kilometres worth of cycle lanes in, you know, in, in less than sort of 18 months. 100 and something new, um, 101, I think, new low traffic neighbourhoods, which I think play a really important role and then 350 uh, school streets, more than yeah. 350 school streets. I'm a huge fan of the, uh, the planters that are being um, dropped in locations to, to stop these <laughs> unnecessary, mostly single occupancy car journeys. Yeah. And Hello. like, you know, in, in my old flat, which is just down the road where, where, where you live, um, I, I can barely get there by car anymore. It's fantastic, I love it. <laughs> well, so, I, you know, I think we all know that we still need cars, people, we still need vans as part of the ecosystem to make the city work. But there are so many journeys that are just unnecessary, just unnecessary yeah. Yeah. or could be done elsewhere. A third of all London's car journeys are less than two kilometres. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. The school trips, I think, are particularly important. You know, a quarter of a million car journeys every morning are associated with school run. Crazy. That's nuts. Yeah. yeah? yeah when I was a kid, my... we walked to school and I go to school. It's crazy. Um, even my son, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's banned. You cannot pick up or drop off yeah. by car. It, it, it's not allowed. So, so nobody is saying this is an anti-car agenda, but it's just saying, actually, if we can move, there's so many millions of trips that could be shifted yeah. to green, yeah. green, greener, cleaner things. Now, yeah. that makes the roads less congested yeah. for yeah. those journeys that have to happen. Yeah. Makes it better for the emergency people services. People are happier. People are happier. Yeah. People are healthier, yeah. you know. The, the, and, and, and it makes the city more competitive because a more livable city is a more competitive city internationally which is good for business and good for the city and good for everybody's well-being. It's, you know, frankly, it's a bit of a no-brainer. Yeah. And if I could invent a drug as powerful as, uh, you know, as, from a health perspective as being active, yeah. I'd have Nobel Prizes up to, yeah, yeah, up to yeah, our yeah. elbows. Well, this is it. Know? It's the e-bike e drug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, so, so, you know, we delivered a huge amount, but, you know, sadly, there's a huge amount more to do, and that's why, you know, TFL needs a sort of long-term sustainable funding arrangement so that we can continue to roll out this network of cycleways and continue to see more people enjoying getting around the city by bike. And so, um, well, why do you think that um, some councils are, are, are less progressive than others when it comes to laying down infrastructure? It seems that, like, Kensington and Chelsea, for example, they, they're just not, it seems there's a lot of contestment and not yeah. really kind of like laying it, laying it out. It is, it's a real problem. So, that, you know, of all the thousands of kilometres of roads in London, you know, the, the TfL and the Mayor have the Highway Authority only for 5%. So 95% of London's roads are, uh, are managed and, and overseen by local councils. Now, some of those councils are doing a phenomenal job in terms of uh, making it safer for people to walk and cycle. You look at the work of Walk Waltham Forest, you mentioned Hackney, I could mention Camden, Southwark, Lambeth, you know, the list goes on and on and on. But there are councils that really haven't got up to speed on, on the delivery, where the roads are particularly, you know, are, are unsafe. And I think you, you touched on Kensington and Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, you know, sadly, there's a, a sort of a, a growing hole in the network uh, around there. And they, they put in a cycle lane along Kensington uh, High Street uh, sort of in 2020. Sadly, that was removed prematurely. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, thousands of people were using that every day to get to school, to get to work. there were quite bad accidents um, yes. in that particular area as well. And, you know, it, one of the worst bits, I said them, there are many great bits to my job, but yeah. one of the worst bits of my job are when people, when I get the emails and the notes saying that, you know, people, someone's been hurt, someone's been, sadly, people have been killed. And it makes me even more determined to do this, but yeah, we have yeah, to yeah. be able to work to, uh, uh, together to get a network across the whole city. Yeah. You can't, you know, you can't have a, a network's only as strong as its weakest bit. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And so, you know, so this is something. But the good news is, I think the zeitgeist is changing. You know, we've got, we've talked a bit about the health side of things. We haven't touched on the climate emergency uh, and just how people are enjoying it. And you're seeing more people you see cycling, the more demand there'll be for it. And that, ultimately, politicians listen to people. Yeah. 
you know, we're, we're, we've got some trials at the moment um, with our, our B2B side of the business, yeah. mainly with cargo, and we've got bikes out with the NHS that are trialing schemes. Oh, fantastic. That now they can use electric, it just opens up. Um, the opportunity, you know, to be something real, and, and it's it's really interesting. We'd love to see uh, big businesses as well now. Um, you know, like absolutely couriers and Freddy's Flowers. Yeah. These guys, you know, they've got sixty or seventy bikes from us. You know, and wow. that is sixty or seventy vans out of the city each. You know, and it's just fantastic. I mean, that's it, 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 and I think this is where it becomes when it becomes business as usual. I've got a friend of mine. He's a, a community nurse for the NHS and sort of uh, has. Sort of, Visits all sorts of people all over all over the city. He historic, you know, when he was when he was a bit younger, he did it all by bike. But he didn't want to stop doing it by bike because he got a bit older. Switched to an e-bike. Yeah. Particularly when he went into more hilly boroughs. Yeah. yeah? And he's using that every day. Brilliant. You know, it's, he says it's quicker, it's faster, it keeps him fit. It's fun. It's and fun. it's fun. Yeah. 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 Just like this. Yeah. Exactly. How do you like that? I bike? love this. It's nice, isn't it? That's seriously nice. Yeah, that's the new G4 that's just come out. Yeah. They've been going for 10 years, Go Cycle. They only make one style bike and they are the, the, the best in their area. No, um, it's, it's lovely. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I sort of, I've, at the moment, I'm not sure I need an e-bike. Uh, I've yet to be, you know, I, I don't, my, my commute isn't that long. I don't man that manage that many hills. Yeah. So, and, and thankfully I'm no longer, my kids are no longer of an age but I'm lugging them around. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I feel like I've got to, yeah, until until I move house, then I can't yeah, see yeah, myself yeah. Uh, for the time being. Okay, so interesting question about cycle lanes. Yes. And it's something we talk about a lot with our customers mm. and our manufacturers. Yeah. So, okay, let me think about the right way to phrase this. So, do you think that cycle lanes should have a 20 mile an hour speed limit? Do I think cycle lanes... So, I think... I think the whole city would be better if everybody slowed down. Yeah. yeah? Far too many, you know, we've, we've been pushing. And I'm going to, you know, I, I, I actually think the right place to start is where there is the biggest risk. Okay. Yep. Yeah? So clearly the biggest risk, even if you just take physics and kinetic energy. Yeah. yeah? A cars, vans and lorries, 20 miles an hour. If someone's hit at 20 miles an hour by a car, you know, they are five times more like five, five, five times more likely to survive than being hit at 30. Yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah so our, yeah. our priority at the moment has to be how do we get the overall speed limit down? Now, yeah. half of London is now 20, 20 miles yeah, an hour yeah, for, yeah. for that perspective. Fantastic. Yeah. But you're right. Some people do tend to cycle, I think, too fast. Yeah. And just as though they're just as there are idiots driving cars, you find yeah. idiots driving yeah, bikes, yeah, yeah. you find idiots um, driving vans you know there are sadly you can't legislate against idiots um, so, so the, the reason so, but the my question, sort of view is that people should slow down yeah do i think that we should make it a rule i'm not sure that that will actually drive the change that we want to see i think there's a need for a sort of a cultural shift to a slightly sort of just a, a bit of empathy a bit of civility on the roads and sort of taking into account everybody's uh, how, how everyone feels about this yeah well, the, the, re the reason I ask is because um, one, I mean, there's like loads of guys like mammals in Lycra doing like crazy speeds, 28, 30 miles an hour. That it's just quite daunting for new cyclists, yeah. particularly on e-bike that may be trying to get back into cycling yeah. or whatever it may be. But also because there's a huge category for people that live a little bit further out to have an HS e-bike, so a high speed e-bike. And <coughs> so they, ha they have to be registered at the moment as a, yeah. as a MP1, as a, as a motorbike. Yeah. And they're not allowed in the cycle lanes. You have to wear a motorcycle helmet and have a okay. full size number yeah. plate. But in Europe, in France, Switzerland, Holland, Germany, Spain, yeah. they, they, they have this category and you have a specialist type helmet, a yeah. type C helmet with a small plate on the back and you yeah. have to get tax insurance. Yeah. They go 28 miles an hour. Yeah. But what? So they're sort of electric mopeds in a way. Yeah, but they're still bikes. But they're still bikes. It, it, it looks like this, yeah. you know, yeah. but, it's, but it goes fast. And it's yeah. for people that live a little bit further out and say they've got long, long flats that are, you know, 15, 20 miles or yeah. whatever. And they just don't want to go at 15 miles an hour. Yeah. They want to go at 28. Yeah. But my suggestion is that I wouldn't they, be comfortable having those in bike lanes, to be if, honest. But if, they, but, if but it I was, could... yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But if 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 they were allowed, here we are at Big Ben. Lovely. It's nearly finished. Show the camera. Look at it, a new shiny yeah, in, Big Ben in, 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 in Europe. They, sorry, a new shiny Big Ben. I love it. I love it. It's, it's great, isn't it? It's beautiful. 
But so so in Europe they, they speed limit the cycle lanes yeah. for, for these bikes to be allowed yeah. in to get more people cycling again. Because yeah. maybe someone that lived in I don't know, Weybridge or, or somewhere yeah. that was like 20 miles away. They just don't want to go 15 yeah. miles an hour. They want to go 28 yeah. on those flats. But then would we trust them to use their bikes at 20 mile an hour speed limit? It's the same thing with the streets. Yeah. You know, it's like every single car that we can see in distance does probably at least 80 miles an hour. Some of them do 150 you know, yeah. miles an hour. But it's the, it's the, you know, it goes back to the responsibility, the empathy. Yeah. And should e high speed e-bikes be legislated in um, uh, the same as they are in Europe is, yeah. is, is kind of what I'm getting to. So I, I you know, I, that is, this, this is one of the real challenges of, of working in a city, yeah, that is an influential city, but yeah. I don't necessarily have all the powers yeah, yeah, to yeah, change yeah, that. Yeah, so that yeah. is clearly, you know, speed limits and it's those regulations level, are, yeah. are, a, are a, a DFT, yeah. like yeah. Uh, yeah. nationwide piece. Yeah. And so we work really closely with uh, DFT because a lot of the new sort of innovations and new approaches end up coming to London first. So we yeah. end up experiencing them yeah. first. So we have yeah. a team in TfL who are specifically focused on innovations in transport. Yeah, and how do we, what role might they play, but also how can they be made safe? So that's yeah. something I'm sure that they're, they're looking at. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it'd be nice to see. Um, because uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a popular topic, isn't it? In with our manufacturers and with our customers that want yeah. HS. Um, anyway, should we turn around and uh, head back? So another topic um, that we internally debate about in the yeah. team as well and with, with our customers is um, what do you think of um, overgrown children riding uh, electric scooters? I don't know about the overgrown children bit, but I certainly know a lot about, I have a view on electric scooters. Goodness me, if I had a pound for every time, uh, every time someone asked me about e-scooters, we'd have even more cycle routes in London. <laughs> but it is, uh, you know, obviously it's a hot topic. What's my view on them? So, you know, last 2020, they estimate over 360,000 e-scooters were, were sold in, in, in the UK. Uh, that, I reckon that's a massive underestimate, but the point, the point is they're not going to be uninvented. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's really clear that the current system is, is just not working. You know, it's, it's bizarre, this it legal well. situation where you can sell them, but you can't ride them in public, on public land. It's just nobody understands it. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. And then because they are, because of lack of regulation and uh, lack of regulation and lack of uh, uh, legislation in this space, there are no vehicle standards. So I was out with the Met the other day and we saw one that could do 60 miles an hour. Now doing 60 miles an hour on that is insanity. Yeah, you yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. hit a cigarette butt at 60 <laughs> miles an hour on one of those things, you're going to come a cropper. It's bad news. So it's very clear to me that, you know, and then there's no, there's no regulations over, should they have, look at this thing, it's brilliant, it's got, really nice brakes at the front at the back it's got its lights built in balance there's you no, can hand signal exactly look at this a pothole. Um, well there shouldn't be any potholes along this cycle <laughs> route um but they uh you know the e-scooters the e there's no there's no regulation around there yeah. the braking the lights this this yeah. is clearly wrong and yeah. very sadly you know three people have been killed in london on on the on on them and I, i'm sad to say I, I think that that will probably increase yeah we need decent legislation. We can't uninvent them, so what can we do? We need to make them safer for the riders and for other road users. Yeah. Now, what does safety mean? Safety means limiting the speeds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, safety means having a minimum uh, wheel diameter. Yeah. 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 safety yeah. means light, yeah. safety yeah. means brakes, yeah. safety yeah. means yeah. Proper, proper battery standards yeah, so they don't yeah. catch fire. Yeah, you know, yeah. all of these things yeah. that you know well and good that happens with electric bikes. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. So I mean, it's, uh, it's homologation, isn't it, at the exactly. end of the day? Exactly. But um, we also then need, so, so, so what we're doing in London is we've brought in a trial. Yep. Yeah. We've got about three and a half thousand e-scooters that are, that are capped. They're capped at 12 and a half miles yeah, an hour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're, they're safer, they save GPS. Yeah, yeah. So you can't ride them in places. Yeah. They got yeah. slow down areas. You can't park them on the pavement randomly. You know, and so this, this whole trial is about trying to figure out how do we make them safer? How do we make them, and, and what role can they play in our transport system? So I do think that there's a role for them. I do think that they can provide an alternative to cars. But I really, really think the situation at the moment is not working. And yeah. so we're talking very closely, we're talking a lot to government 
about you know getting 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 proper legislation to make yeah. it safer for people in the cities and and and, and, and stopping them <laughs> until this is done or like kind of allowing the area to stay grey until it's done i think it needs uh, i think i think stop I, I think essentially what needs to happen is we need to get the legislation in proper yeah. legislation in yeah. quickly yeah. because you can't uninvent them yeah, too many yeah, yeah, there's yeah. too many of them out there but yeah. also you need to stop people selling these things that are not you know that's, that the, the, big one. that's the you need to stop people selling things that are frankly dangerous yeah yeah exactly that should be the first part of legislation yeah. is a type approval yeah um, and um, and yeah it's crazy i mean you know the shops down the road from us that have got kids coming in to pick them up, you know, like, you know, de restricting them in the shop, yeah. and then riding them off, like, you know, with, with you know, but on their first ever mission exactly. in London. Exactly. No, crazy. and there's no, you know, so for, for our rental ones, you've got to have a driving license or yeah. a provisional driving license yeah, yeah, to be able yeah. to use them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and then they've got, you know, and so then you've got some ability to control who's using them, yeah. track back who it is. This is just common sense. We've decided to, to basically not sell them until maybe we'll revisit it when when the legislation is in place i think but that's very sensible frankly, we, I, myself actually... and the commander in the met uh yeah. wrote so me, myself and the, the head, head of, uh, tra of, of of transport of, of, in the met police wrote to all the major retailers at christmas sort of basically telling them that they need to do more to inform their customers of the illegal status of this yeah. because i think a lot of people are buying these not realizing that they can't use them on the streets and yeah. they can get seized yeah I'm not a fan They're of They're breaking I the mean, law. In general, you know, I, I, I really would, would rather never sell them. But I do think that in certain cities, like, say, Barcelona or Berlin or LA, where they've got these big, wide sidewalks, it is a great thing to get people out of their cars, going yeah. back to... It's going back to those buses. unnecessary yeah. short journeys. Yeah. And, you know, frankly, given the damage that the, the cars do to the environment, the congestion they cause, the... The, the impact it has on people's health uh, and, and the danger they cause in terms of road danger, I'll look at all sorts of new innovations to try and get and enable more people to make yeah. that switch. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we are now approaching the end of our little uh, adventure, um, but I'm going to take you to our service centre and our e-cargo bike showroom and I'm um, going to introduce you to Dan, who um, who's one of the directors of Fully Charged. And Fantastic. He, he runs the, the B2B side yes. of the business. So he's selling cargo, cargo bikes, bikes like they are literally going out of fashion. Welcome everybody to our new site. And um, here we are very proud to show you London's largest e-bike and e-cargo service center and e-cargo showroom. And here is Dan. Hey Dan, how nice are you doing? You. Will Norman, nice to meet you. Hi there, Dan. Nice to meet you. And uh, so Will, this is Arch 2, which yeah. is our workshop. This really is the kitchen of the operation. So um, all the new bikes that are coming in through here are yeah. built in here, uh, electric bikes, should we say. Um, there's six electric bike stands yeah. and uh, two uh, electric cargo bike stands over there. Oh, wow. Which we've actually bought over from the, the motorcycle industry. So they're yeah. quad bike Because lifts. they need to be heavy. Um, yeah. So they're big, big and yeah. heavy and our, our mechanics can work around the electric yeah. cargo bikes, which is great. Um, so, um, yeah, in addition to that, obviously all the servicing, uh, how we look after our customers, yeah. that's all, all done in here. Um, so it's hugely exciting. In time, this is something which we're looking to expand in, in other arches, as, yeah. you, as you've seen next door. Um, and certainly the cargo bike side of things, the support of businesses, that will have a, a, its own section. Yeah, um, you just need so much space for that, which is Yeah, crazy. of course, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, and as we know, in London, space is a premium, yes. and that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is a, it is a so. But this is phenomenal, isn't it? It's a, it really is big. Yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. Well, so uh, we can't thank you enough for coming in. It's been a real no, pleasure thank to you, meet you. Thank you for showing me. And, it's um, so exciting, so and, you know, I, I, you know, I, you know, I, I'm brand and company agnostic, but it's wonderful seeing the whole, the e-bikes, e-cargo bikes and everything you guys are doing and everyone else is doing in the industry to grow this because, you know, we need to see that cultural shift in London and it's, it's happening and that's yeah, what's it exciting. Is. It is indeed. Cool. Thank you. Thanks very much.